Have you ever wondered if testosterone replacement therapy is right for you? Maybe you are already on it and you have concerns about things like prostate health and heart disease, or maybe it's something else. My name is Dr. Taranella, and this channel is aimed at helping you understand and optimize your health and body. In this video, we'll delve into testosterone replacement therapy, TRT, and debunk five of the most common misconceptions or myths surrounding it, things like estrogen, prostate cancer, heart disease, and more for the last 12 years or so. If you're getting a lot out of these videos and liking these videos, hit that like and subscribe button to continue getting videos like this. All right, let's jump into the video. The first common TRT myth we're going to look at and debunk is more testosterone is better. Contrary to popular belief, more testosterone isn't always better. And while higher levels might seem beneficial in some aspects, excessively high levels of testosterone are going to lead to adverse effects in different areas. And in my clinical experience, those benefits of high testosterone don't always outweigh the risks of the adverse effects or the downsides to high testosterone. The testosterone levels that I typically see are going to be optimal for the vast majority of people. Speaking of total testosterone is around 850 to 1000 nanograms per deciliter. And that again is for most individuals. And it's going to help with things like enhancing libido, motivation, energy, even joint pain can decrease when you're going from a much lower level in the 300s up to this range. Now levels much higher around 1500 to 1700 nanograms per deciliter can lead to more mood swings, increased aggression, and other unwanted side effects. Things like sleep problems, increased sleep apnea, and even elevated risk of cardiovascular issues, which we're also going to look at in more detail too. Now we're also going to look at some of these other things in more detail as well. But it's crucial to understand that each person's ideal testosterone level is somewhat unique. And finding that ideal balance of that ideal testosterone for you is ideal to reaping the benefits without encountering some of these side effects. So while total testosterone of around 850 to 1000 may be a good starting place or an optimal range for the vast majority of people, some people may need less and also some people may need even more, especially when your free testosterone is on the low side. You sometimes do need more of the total in order to get that free higher. All right, let's look at the second TRT myth, which is estrogen is bad. This is a common misconception that estrogen is bad or harmful to men, but it's also true that you don't want excessive levels of estrogen either. Some men naturally produce more estrogen, and it's influenced by things like your genetics and other lifestyle factors and health conditions that you might have, like diabetes. High insulin levels can increase estrogen production, for instance, through increasing the activity of the aromatase enzyme. And that may lead to much higher estrogen levels than would be optimal. However, estrogen also plays a significant role in the optimal, healthy physiological functions in the male body as well, like supporting of cell membrane production and turnover of tissues. And so in that sense, when you have injuries, having adequate estrogen around and testosterone is helpful. And by the way, of course, Estrogen is also important for the vasodilation of the arteries, and so in that sense can be linked with libido and erectile dysfunction. Just like testosterone kind of has a unique optimal range for each person, estrogen levels can too. So while we don't want to have super high estrogen levels like north of 45, we also don't want super low estradiol levels like south of, say, 20 or 15. But that leaves a pretty broad range for each person in testing your estrogen levels or it's going to help you really understand how much this is playing a role in your overall optimization of your TRT. And along those lines too, going back to the first myth, more is better, the more testosterone you're giving yourself, the higher your levels are, the more you have to manage in terms of estradiol levels too because that testosterone is naturally going to get converted into estrogen. And back to the question of estradiol and its role in erectile function, a systematic review suggested that higher estradiol levels were associated with erectile dysfunction, indicating the need for 
very careful monitoring of estradiol levels. And you don't necessarily want low estrogen levels either. And that's going to be more important when men have low testosterone, they may also have low estrogen levels. And research on the effects of low estradiol on male sexual health is less common, but it is suggested that both estrogen and testosterone are necessary for healthy libido in males. For example, some studies have demonstrated that libido may significantly improve when estradiol levels are above 5 nanograms per deciliter, which is a very low bar, but still hinting at the importance of estradiol in the overall sexual function of males. And I've definitely seen this in my practice too, where you crash someone's estradiol levels with too much aromatase inhibition, they do tend to have more decreased libido and erectile dysfunction problems. And estrogen is also vasoprotective and also allows for vasodilation and can enhance the function of the endothelial cells, which is the inside lining of the arteries, promoting production of nitric oxide and having an anti-inflammatory effect locally there, which can significantly enhance or improve the health of those arteries. So with all this information, it should be clear that estrogen is not the en enemy in a male's physiology and is a vital component to our health. But it also should be clear too that you need to manage those levels carefully and keep in mind that sometimes too high of levels or too low of levels can be part of the problem when you're having side effects from your TRT. So myth number three that we want to look at is testosterone causes prostate cancer. This myth has definitely been debunked by a recent study showing that TRT does not increase the risk of prostate cancer. For many years, it has been believed or suggested that higher testosterone levels would fuel the growth of prostate cancer. However, extensive research, including studies at the National Prostate Cancer Registry of Sweden, indicates that TRT does not increase the incidence of prostate cancer. In fact, it seems that TRT is associated with more favorable risk of prostate cancers, suggesting that men that undergo TRT are more likely to be diagnosed with less aggressive, less problematic prostate cancers. Additional studies have found no direct link between TRT and the reoccurrence of prostate cancer in men that have gone radical prostatectomy. So these findings have represent a significant shift in how the medical community in urology in general is viewing testosterone replacement therapy advocating for a more individualized treatment plan and the need to weigh the benefits and risks when prostate cancer is or assumed to be present. While it's still important to be cautious and monitor your prostate numbers as you're on TRT, especially in the presence of or history of prostate cancer, the evidence suggests that TRT, when it's managed appropriately, doesn't necessarily inherently increase your risk of aggressive prostate cancer or prostate cancer in general. This more nuanced understanding is encouraging of an individualized approach to your TRT and considering the benefits and risks based on what your individual risk factors are. You can see the link in the description for some of the studies that were referenced here. And as always, you should consult with your doctor before making any changes to your specific healthcare plan. So the fourth TRT myth that we're going to look at is testosterone replacement therapy or TRT makes you angry. There is limited research on this specific aspect of TRT, but clinical observations suggest that TRT is more likely to improve someone's mood rather than exacerbate or create more anger and irritability. For years, testosterone has been associated with aggressiveness in popular culture, but the reality is that it's a little bit more nuanced than that. So let's look at some information surrounding this. Those with low testosterone undergoing TRT, studies have shown improvements in positive mood parameters, such as energy, well-being, and friendliness, while reducing negative mood parameters, including things like anger, nervousness, and irritability. My clinical experience in giving men testosterone replacement therapy supports these findings noting that patients often report reduced irritability and better overall mood when their testosterone levels are optimized. And it's typically the case that, that you're starting off at a really low level and then you go on testosterone and you're coming way up and so you notice that lift in mood. 
But it's also important to note that the key here is maintaining testosterone levels within normal physiological ranges and extremely high levels can definitely lead to, in some cases, increased moodiness and disturbances in your sleep. But testosterone, when it's kept within optimal ranges, oftentimes contributes to more emotional stability and enhanced quality of life. And that tends to lead to decreased anger. What I've seen though too, is that people that already have some underlying irritability mood issues that are maybe underneath the surface, those tend to come out when you're starting testosterone replacement therapy. And you may notice it as I'm a little bit more on edge. I'm a little bit more prone to being irritable. And so if that's the case, it just kind of supports the fact that maybe you're on a little bit too much. Your particular level of testosterone may need to be much lower than what we may manage other people at because of that hint of irritability that's going on. And in some cases, you're just not able to take it at all because that irritability is so strong. But typically, it is a dose-dependent phenomenon. So as you reduce the dose, you're going to have much less of that irritability occurring. The fifth and last TRT myth that we're going to look at is that you should avoid TRT when you have heart disease. So this myth I explored in more detail in a whole separate video, but we want to look at the TRAVERSE trial led by the Cleveland Clinic that found that TRT did not increase major cardiovascular events compared to placebo. And this was an extensive study it involved men with hypogonadism and had higher risk of cardiovascular disease, which is great because it gives us insight into that particular risk group that we want to understand. And so they gave this population of men testosterone replacement therapy. And while there was an increased risk of atrial fibrillation and venous blood clots in the testosterone treated group, the overall findings indicate that the men on TRT had better outcomes in terms of death rates and major cardiovascular events. And this is great news, but it's also important to approach this with careful consideration and caution. And that just basically means more closely monitoring the men with cardiovascular disease. You want to be more cautious with hematocrit levels, more cautious with your overall dosing of testosterone. And that just means dose adjustments should be done to maintain testosterone within physiological ranges for your age. And the same is true to maintain the hematocrit levels. And this is just one more layer of information suggesting that balance is key to getting the benefits while minimizing the potential risks of testosterone replacement therapy. If you're simply getting a cookie cutter approach to your testosterone replacement therapy, chances are you're going to run into some problems down the road if it's not being monitored by a healthcare professional. And testosterone replacement therapy can be very effective for men with low testosterone and hypogonadism, and hopefully this sheds some light on some of the common myths that are out there around testosterone replacement therapy. If you do have questions, drop them in the comment section. That's why I'm doing the videos to help you guys understand what's happening with your health. If you want a more nuanced, customized answer, consider joining the membership program. We'll have more time and attention to dedicate to your question. For sure, some of these myths will persist longer, but evidence in the research that I've looked at in my clinical experience suggests that when properly managed, testosterone will definitely improve the quality of life without significantly increasing your risk of prostate cancer or heart disease or other problems. But if you're someone that's not quite convinced, you want to see a little bit more information on this, you might want to look at the full story on prostate cancer risk, and you can check out that video here. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.